Hey everybody, it's Christina Holloway here. Welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to talk about how to develop a growth mindset at work. And I'm going to cover four coaching techniques that I use with my clients. There's a difference between having a growth mindset and a fixed mindset. And we're going to talk about that today. Also, this video has another objective. It's my birthday next week, and this video is a big thank you to you for watching my videos, subscribing to my channel, and supporting me as I grow on YouTube. Make sure to watch to the end to see how I'm celebrating this year. Real quick, if you enjoy this content and want to learn more about how to make power moves in your career, make sure to follow my channel and hit the notification bell so you never miss a video from me. All right, so let's get started. Number one, a growth mindset is outward as well as inward. So. You might be familiar with the term growth mindset, especially if you work at a company that promotes it as part of its core values or a method for building up employee engagement. Personally, I think companies tend to latch onto popular terms like this, and then they give it a whole new definition, which takes the power out of the concept. So a growth mindset is simply your ability to keep moving forward. Having a growth mindset helps you understand that you are continuously on a learning journey. You have an open mind and you're willing to try new things and keep evolving to get to your next destination. A fixed mindset is really about believing that things are the way they are and there isn't much you can do to change it. Phrases like, oh well, it's too late now, or I'm not learning that, that's not part of my job, are good examples of having a fixed mindset. You may struggle to see the value of something that takes you outside your comfort zone. Now, if you tend to internalize what a growth mindset is supposed to look like, you could run into problems. Your ideas of a growth mindset could start working against you, especially in stressful situations. You may withdraw and become isolated. Ideas like embracing challenges or failing forward or building resilience can be a part of a growth mindset, but without context, they can cause a lot of stress and anxiety, especially if you start turning them inward and telling yourself you need to be doing more because you're just not getting it. The outward part of a growth mindset will help you balance the two. On one hand, you can build up your confidence and be open to new experiences as you grow in your career. Learning and development are great tools for that. On the other hand, you also need to contribute to the bigger picture. Are you tracking your progress? Are you engaging in established processes and methodologies that are sure to help you succeed? Are you encouraging others around you to ask for help when necessary? Are you taking time to understand new strategies and how they impact your work? All of that also helps you build a growth mindset, especially one that's outwardly focused as well as inwardly developed. It creates engagement with those around you and the more all of you are working in this manner, the more likely a growth mindset becomes a foundational element of your high performance team. Number two, embrace failure. This one is simple yet complex. Don't be afraid to fail. Now I can talk all about how to handle a situation that goes bad and how to recover from a failure and how to pick yourself up from a failure so you can keep moving forward, but not today. Embracing failure really means that you just need to decide for yourself if it's worth it to try, even if you know you have a good chance of failing at it. A fixed mindset will take you away from trying anything new because what's the point? It's going to fail anyway, so why bother trying? Now, you may have studied the situation carefully and come to the conclusion that it's not going to work. Great, you did your due diligence. But if you have a tendency to steer away from new opportunities because of fear of failure, then your fixed mindset might be working against you. I could tell you we all fail. We all have experienced ex embarrassing moments. It's a rite of passage. You get used to it, etc. But if you're facing something that's extremely important to you, those platitudes won't be helpful. You have to ask yourself if it's worth it to let that opportunity go by. And if fear of failure is the only thing holding you back from trying something really important to you, then you need to ask yourself, what's the absolute worst thing that could happen if I fail? Go deep into it. I could go broke. I could lose my job. I could lose friends or family over this. After all that, if it's the worst that could happen, but it's still far-fetched, then consider taking a chance on that opportunity. Because the next question is, in 10 years, will I have regretted passing this up? I ask myself that question a lot. Will you regret not doing this? How bad could this go? And can you recover? And you know, sometimes I do fail spectacularly, but at least I tried. And to me, that's a win. Number three, 
give yourself a break. This one is hard. I see this a lot in women's magazines, and maybe this is a message that women need to hear more than men. Be kind to yourself. Maybe these magazines are referring more to negative self-talk, like treat yourself like you would a friend and be kind. And that's true, but I tend to see it more in women, and me too. They tend to show up to coaching calls ready for the self-critique. Hey, Christina, here are all the things I did wrong and how I can fix them. Or I guess I should have tried harder or done more. Then I would have been more successful. Many times that's not necessarily true. And I do it too. I was talking to my own coach many years ago and going through this difficult situation. And she asked, why are you so hard on yourself? And I was surprised because I just didn't see it. I'm going to call this having a self-care mindset. This goes along with self-confidence and self-esteem. Take care of your mind and your ability to see your worth through challenging times and also, you know, exhilarating times. Make this a regular habit of writing down your wins and your valuable contributions, even when things are going wrong. This is a growth mindset, seeing the victories inside the challenges. Constantly remind yourself that you have value and that you're building something important, your career that's going to take you to bigger and better places as you continue to grow and learn. That's how you succeed. All right, so that's it for my video on how to develop a growth mindset, especially when things may seem to be going slow for you or just not going your way. If you have some great wins in your career this year, feel free to share them in the comments. I would love to celebrate them with you. Thank you again for being part of my YouTube journey. On a final note, to celebrate my YouTube milestones of 1,000 subscribers and 5,000 watch hours, and especially another trip around the sun for me, I'll be making my year-end donations this year to two organizations, St. Jude Children's Research Hospital and the Anti-Cruelty Society, which is where I adopted the Augie Dog. <laughs> Thank you again for the support. And if you enjoyed watching this video and you found it helpful, please make sure to give it a big thumbs up by hitting that like button. Make sure you're subscribed to my channel so you never miss another video from me. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.